What is up, everybody? Chase Oliver 68 here, bringing you my UFC 134 recap and results for tonight's show. Tonight's show was live in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Did Anderson Silva walk away as the middleweight champion, or did Yushin Okami pull up the upset? Did Antonio Minotaur Noguera, is he on the right track again? And who won Shogun versus Forrest? Find out in this recap and results show. So anyways, the show kicked off with Nedkov, and his first name is like Stancilov Nedkov, um, a guy who's been waiting for his UFC debut for a long time, versus Br a Br fellow Brazilian, um, I'm not Brazilian, but basically Brazil, a Brazilian in Luis, Luis Kane. Ugh, fucking spotch his name there, Luis Kane. So Luis Kane, you know, light heavyweight bout, Ned Klov, he's been waiting for this for a long time. You know, he's been he's been basically on the sidelines for a fucking long time. He was supposed to come, like, a year ago. Like, he was supposed to fight last summer, and all his opponents got injured. Bill Davis, and then he was supposed to fight some scrub, and he got injured. So it was just like, God, who, who can we put this guy against? They saw Luis Kane. They knew he was entertaining as fuck. Luis Kane's one of those guys, gunslinger. He just, he just wants a punch. He, he doesn't care about, like, what happens to him? Luis Kane barely goes to the decision. This this guy just likes to punch and bunch, and you know he just loves throwing those strikes. He's a very good technical striker. Um, the first round base and in the first round with Ned Cobb winning by TKO. Ned Cobb and Luis Kane, you know, going back and forth. Feel bad for Luis Kane. You know, Luis Kane had a lot of damage on Ned Cobb. Looked like he had Ned Cobb, and Ned Cobb came back with a huge, I believe I want to say right hand and put net put freaking Luis Kane on his ass, and basically Ned Cobb took control finish the fight good good fight to open up the show thank you brazilian fans for being behind louise kane showing you cared and booing when he lost normally when you we get into the american crowds and even the canadian crowds they they have their favorite fighters before they enter and then when someone hits a huge knockout i get it you're excited that the knockout happened but they all of a sudden turn up flip a 180 and say that guy's awesome and you know thank you guys for just you know you know being um, supportive of your fellow Brazilians here tonight and also UFC please do not use Kenny Florian anymore when it comes to post fight interviews this guy was awkward as fuck he didn't he wasn't like Joe Rogan like all right I'm here with you know who he just won the fight Kenny Florian's like uh, uh congratulations Louis Kane Con uh, 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 you know he was just saying the name and uh, god it was just so unoriginal couldn't you got Frank Mir or Gus Johnson can I call it the H-bomb H-bomb for all you Strike Force fans and people who know what I'm talking about, you know what's up. But anyways, we move on to that for a heavyweight battle between Brennan Schaub, American, versus we had again a Brazilian, Antonio Rodrigo Nogueira. Did the Americans win this? Can America go two and zero over? Well, Nedkov is not American, but still, will an American win this fight? Let's see when I review it or go over it. Basically, Brennan Schaub and Nogueira. Um, was a pretty interesting fight. It wasn't like the best fight on the card. Noguera wins after a TKO on on Shab. Shab was pinned against the cat um, fence after a nice little jab Noguera did, and then Noguera hit this huge right hand and freaking Shab just goes flat on his ass, and Noguera starts wailing on him like bam, 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 like he and basically wins. All I gotta say is Noguera. Um, he didn't look very like. How can I say? Good. He, he he did put on a decent performance, but his performance was like, kind of was not like the best I've seen. He kind of seemed sloppy when he was punching. He was kind of like wailing his punches out there. And Brendan Schaub, on most occasions, countered his strikes and had Nogueira rocked. I thought it was, I just really thought Nogueira was not looking very that great, but happy he won because, you know, I like Nogueira and it's cool. Brendan Schaub, though, after that performance, I wouldn't say that he sucks by any means. He looked very great in the exchange, and that's what some fans kind of throw away into, where they look at a fighter, and just because they lost to a, you know, a little bit bigger name fighter, they kind of say he sucks automatically, when they don't look at the overall performance that was happening inside that octagon, and showing, hey, you know, Brendan Schaub looked really good. But they're just going to shit on Brendan Schaub now, saying he's an overrated piece of shit just because he got knocked out by Noguera, instead of looking at the whole fight and saying, Brendan Schaub looked good, he was countering Noguera on certain strikes. Noguera was kind of looking sloppy. 
I don't know, some people are just, just don't really look at the whole picture here. But basically, Brennan Schaub and Noguera, congratulations. Schaub, you know, he will fight anyone. Noguera, I'm saying this now, UFC. I want Lesnar Noguera now. Seriously. Next up, we go to the UFC lightweight division. Jesus, that division is so stacked. Between Ultimate Fighter 9 winner Ross Pearson versus Edmund Barboza Jr. And a great fight, um, in my opinion. Fight of the night. Very good. Very entertaining, in my mind. Very technical when it came to striking. These two really were just going at it. So, you know, Ross Pearson and Edmund Barboza first round. I would have given it to Ross Pearson. Ross Pearson was more aggressive coming in. He was looking for it at big time. And then Barbosa, yeah, he did some flashy kicks, but it wasn't like, oh my God, you know, it was amazing. It was just, he was doing some flashy kicks. He did very well, in my opinion, in the first round, um, Ross Pearson. So I gave Ross Pearson the, the nod on the first round. Second round, and then Barbosa, he was probably pissed, you know. First round, you know, coming off of two fights back to back, ending in the first round KO. You know, he, he really wanted to be impressive, so he was like, fuck this. Evan Barbosa throws a nice little high kick up in there. Ross Pearson ducks his head, and Evan Barbosa catches him. Ross Pearson goes down, but he's not out. Ross Pearson, for all you guys in the UK watching this video for the first time, or, you know, are my UK fans out there? I know I, I probably have a couple. Um, whatever bandwagon you on for Michael Bisping, fuck that shit. Jump on the Ross Pearson bandwagon and love the shit out of him. This motherfucker right here gets literally leveled by Edmund Barbosa and gets up and he's still swinging. This guy really wants to fight. He's a fighter in the UFC. And I was loving Ross Pearson. But Edmund Barbosa though, when it comes to fights, yes, Ross Pearson was more aggressive. But Edmund Barbosa hit the more power shots in that round. And I'll explain more about that when I... Go into why the judges chose the winner here. But in the meantime, Edmund Barboza, in my opinion, won the second round. So, 2-2, two -two, you know. And then we go on to the third round. Both men are pretty tired. You know, Barboza's trying to hit his kicks. Ross Pearson's trying to fight. Um, they were just kind of tired. They were just wailing at each other the whole time. Um, Barboza got the best of Pearson in the first couple minutes of the third round. And Pearson comes back and he's ready. He, he's telling Barboza in the last 30 seconds, let's go! Like he's pounding his chest. He's so fired up. Ross Pearson fucked the world and Ross Pearson literally, you know, kind of didn't get the job done. He was trying to go for a big time knockout, was sloppy on his last knee. Um, any result goes 29-28 Barboza, 29-28 Pearson and your winner by split decision Edmund Barboza Jr. Now people are going to be saying, I thought Ross Pearson won that round. What who, why Why do you think Edmund Barboza won the third round? And here's why I'm putting it. Basically, when I look into fights, I look at it as a boxing thing, uh, as a boxing fan. Yes, I know boxing and MMA, two different things, but MMA guys uses the boxing scorecard. And when it comes to the boxing scorecard, it comes down to who landed the more punches, who landed better um, kicks, and who looked better overall at the end. Edmund Barboza just had a little cut that was like right here. Ross Pearson had a fucking hematoma from a knee from Edmund Barboza. Edmund Barboza hit the more power punches and was more, and per se, yes, Ross Pearson showed more aggressive sniff, aggressive sniffs. Uh, wow, I can't even say that word. He showed more aggression, as I could say, but Edmund Barboza overall landed the more damage, and that's overall what kind of carried to maybe Edmund Barboza winning this fight. But overall, great fight. It could have gone either way. I'm fine with whoever won this fight. Both men put it out out there. Um, I didn't see any prelim fights, but to me, this is the fight of the night. Then we get on to a fight that everyone was looking forward to. Forrest Griffin Nuthugger fans versus Shogun Rua Nuthugger fans. Who is going to win in this colossal battle? Well, Shogun Rua is probably thinking this in his head. Fucking Vitor beat Akiyama like this really quick. I want to do the same thing. And basically, that's it. Force came in. Um, I don't know what was up with Force. He looked sloppy as fuck. He was just trying to strike with Shogun. And Force, yes, you got the best out of Shogun last time when it comes to striking. But why didn't you use your takedowns like with Rich Franklin? I do not understand. Instead, freaking Shogun beats him in 1 minute and 43 seconds. 
hits a huge punch, and then do 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 do. It looked like Leo Machida all over again. Seriously, you could have put the Leo Machida clip where Shogun. It, it was the same exact ending of Leo Machida. Where Shogun hits him with a huge hand and then do 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 same exact ending. You could have put both of those clips together and you wouldn't probably tell the difference. Shogun Rule wins. TKO. Congratulations, Shogun. Moving yourself up, maybe back to that title picture. Do you think Shogun is ready for the title? I don't. I don't think so. I think he needs a couple more fights. And you know what? That UFC on Fox card coming up and Shogun really not taking any damage from this fight. I don't think Griffin landed a punch. I was. I'm saying this right now, UFC. Rashad Shogun on Fox. It will sell. Just just saying. But Forrest Griffin, sadly he lost. Um, didn't want to talk. Forrest is probably running somewhere. Sucks for Forrest, you know. I was expecting a lot more from this fight. Kind of disappointing. But sometimes the, it's always the same thing. The second fight is never as good as the first. Because, you know, the first fight kind of, they don't know each other. Now it's the second fight. They're like, oh, we know each other. So, Rematches at times are never really as good. Congratulations, Shogun. And then we get into the main event of the evening. My boy, the Spider, Anderson Silva, the middleweight champion, versing the challenger in his last loss in his MMA career, Yushin Thunder Okami. Um, Anderson Silva fighting in Brazil. He's a superstar in Brazil. He's fucking being sponsored by Burger King. He's being sponsored by Nike down there. You know, he has every sponsor. You know, Anderson Silva just shits out sponsorship money in Brazil. But Anderson Silva comes out. First round, you know, he's kind of doing his little, I'm going to analyze you shit. He's like, using his past hands. And Okami's trying to, you know, feel him out a little bit. See, okay, what should I do? The dumb thing Okami didn't do was set up his takedowns. If he would have set up his takedowns, he wouldn't have gotten tooled. Like he did by Anderson Silva in the second round. Oh, baby. Can't wait to talk about that. But the first round, nothing really exciting happens. As Anderson just basically is stuck in a clinch the whole time trying to get out. Yushin doing the smart strategy, doing dirty boxing. Anderson Silva comes out. He's fucking pissed. He hits him with a huge kick. Yushin box up and Anderson going for a huge knee. And then the, the clock runs out. And Anderson's like, oh, fuck. I probably fucked up again. And, you know... It was chill. Anderson Silva went back to his corner. And then this is when Anderson Silva went into fucking beast mode. Anderson Silva comes out second round. He's not freaking wasting any time. He's just going at it. Throwing punches, throwing kicks. Does the Matrix a couple times. The Matrix is where he goes for a punch and he dodges it like he's part of the Matrix movie. He dodges it. And then the funniest part of this whole fucking fight. Anderson Silva. He is so confident with his striking. Anderson Silva literally puts his hands down in front of Okami. He's not scared. Okami goes in, hits him with a huge jab, and Anderson Silva just looks at him, goes back with the jab of his own. Boom! Okami gets knocked the fuck down, and Anderson grabs his foot, clapping his hand. And Okami, basically, after that, Anderson Silva just had fun with Okami, dodging all his moves, hitting him with strikes. Then they got into an exchange. Okami didn't hit. Anderson Silva, big hook, knocks the fuck down of Okami. And then this is where Anderson Silva... He, knew, he knows Okami's hurt. He just comes down, goes hammer fist, puts a knee to the body for fun, does an elbow. He know he's just showing off all his ground moves. Anderson Silva wins the fight, retains the middleweight championship. Still the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Yes, I'm saying that, GSP fans, you can deal with it. And basically shows how dominant he could be. And the fans were going crazy. Anderson's going crazy. And the funniest line... Anderson, who do you want to fight next? My clone. Clone Anderson Silva versus Anderson Silva. Who would win? That's going to be an interesting matchup if that ever happens. But I don't know who Anderson Silva will face next. Maybe Bisping if he can go past Miller. Maybe Chael Stonen if he can beat Brian Sand. Or hell, Vitor Belfort wants to fight again. Let's just see Vitor get his ass kicked. Um, Anderson Silva, impressive performance. Is still your middleweight champion of the world. Um, final thoughts of the show. The show was kind of, it was entertaining in some aspects. The Brazilian crowd did a great job keeping my interest throughout the show. It was just kind of, I don't know, the fights kind of didn't live up to the expectations I thought they would be. Some of the performances by some fighters were kind of like Forrest and Nogueira, even though Nogueira won, were kind of sloppy and not really what I thought they were going to be. And, you know, it just kind of was just, overall, it felt very good. But at the same time, it just kind of felt, you know, the low point. 
Um, fight of the night, I said it, Edmund Barboza versus Ross Pearson. Very good fight. Um, MVP of the night, Anderson Silva, no doubt, you know. After showing how confident you are, getting struck by Okami, literally putting your hands on, letting them strike you, and then Anderson Silva basically tooling you and making you look like, hey, your strikes are little baby strikes. Boy, show something, right? And not only that, you know, loser of the night, I, Forrest Griffin, I'm sorry. I, I was going to say Luis Kane just because he lost in his hometown, but at least he put up a fight. Forrest Griffin just looked very sloppy from the start and then didn't really deliver at the end. I I didn't want to say Forrest, but just, just overall, based on performance, Forrest Griffin looked really bad. It was not the best Forrest um, show at, at all. And you should not call me your co-loser of the night. Fuck, you, you got tooled it. How the fuck do you punch someone and then get knocked down by a jab? Come on. Uh, so that, that's pretty much it for this UFC recap and results, you know. This show, if you want me to grade it, if you guys want a letter grade, uh, I would give it a B, solid B. It wasn't like nowhere near a B plus. It wasn't nowhere near a B minus. It wasn't overall terrible. The fights were kind of entertaining, you know. Um, the first fight between Ned Cobb and Kane was very good for what started. Shab and Nogueira was kind of sloppy, but it was okay, you know. Barboza and Pearson, I enjoyed that fight technically. Real Griffin was a disappointment because you know. Forrest looked bad to start with, and Griffin didn't, and Rua didn't look like in the best shape of his life, so, uh, and Silva and Okami, just pure entertainment for me, so, thank you all very much for watching my UFC 134 recap and results show, um, comment down below your thoughts on your, on UFC 134, whoa, I just stuttered there, brain fart, subscribe up above if this is your first time checking out my channel, more MMA, wrestling whatever you guys like videos coming soon make sure to stay tuned to my channel sunday um i'm going to be posting up a video explaining what's going on with my channel for the next week so make sure you check out that thank you all for very much for watching the ufc 134 review follow me on twitter add me on skype chase oliver 68 and i'm saying right now war silva and peace